All right, thank you for joining us for Ezra Miller campaign. This is episode four. One and three are missing for technical issues. We're not going to go into it. <laughs> All right, so we left off with Gray smashing the bottom of the floor, going down, down, down into the center of the earth, into a portal, and disappearing. The rest of you of uh, the game disappeared. They teleported with Calvin. And they ended up in Oxford, Ohio. I don't care who, somebody flip a coin. All right, it's night time. For the reference, uh, this is the campus of Oxford of uh, Miami Oxford University. You are currently in the city, not far from that campus. Here's a decent photo of the city. That's no, not, never mind. It looks like your standard college town in Midwest Ohio, in my opinion. Immediately where you're at, there is nobody there, but you do hear people nearby. You don't know if they're cryptids or people, but you do hear talking in the background. Like, people are going about their day, whatever semblance of a day they have. Uh, look into the windows okay so where you're at currently is like the city center there's like a small gazebo there's like a uh, it's in a tiny tiny park around it is a bunch of shops uh there's a street on the left and a street on the right they cut through the entire s town essentially essentially excuse me and uh have roads that intersect with it but um on the left side is a bunch of shops like um uh, restaurant, hippie restaurants, some uh, cafes on the right hand side there's buildings facing away from you mostly and a lot of these are like art museum art galleries uh, more coffee shops uh, they're above one of them is actually an underground music area where they have concerts that you have to have um, know somebody to get into that actually um, it will be important to remember What, Kevin? Oh, you're fine. Yeah, one second. My monitor just turned off. Uh, did it just come plugged? Yeah, it came unplugged. I wish I could have fixed it. Um, there is a... I don't know, but how do you describe it? And there's a small... Uh, uh, there's a building that has a section of it up top, closed off. It's called the attic, is what the, what the, the place is called. It's where they have a lot of indie bands play. Think of like a, think of it kind of like a speakeasy almost. Okay, that place will be for, uh, important for you guys to remember though. <laughs> What's it going? 
Oh, actually, here's a better uh, photo of the actual city, I think. Yeah, there you go. Oh, that's the bed. That's not the right one. Like, you got kind of these shops that are uh, sprinkled about. You get some traditional gas stations, like, usually at the corner of the of the road. It's a really old style road that has actual bricks instead of asphalt. Actual bricks. And it's a very, very historic. Brick. Actually, here's a better photo of the, of the brick if you would like to see it. <laughs> now in the city there is secluded areas like park like actual parks and there is a uh, covered bridge nearby Give me a second, second roll real quick. I love this bag Zach got me. Right. Jess, don't forget you have die of your own physical ones. All right, so I actually, I actually spots a shadow and above one of the buildings, um, not on your side of the street. You guys are on the the left side of the gazebo. Near that, I don't that corner of the street. On the right hand side, across the gazebo, across the tiny park, there is a building, not directly on the side, but kind of like down the street further, looking diagonally at you. Uh, you see a shadow cross across uh, the top of the, the roof um, from your sight line. It's over 100 feet, just so you know. Oh, I believe it. I understand. <laughs> um, Nelson, you said you wanted to find a place secluded? <clears throat> Nelson, the most secluded place is actually going to be the alleyway that I was telling you about, where it has the, the attic speakeasy area that alleyway is probably the most secluded area with the most cover currently and if you're looking into shops nearby they are empty a lot of them are closed down closed and people have barricaded the windows and doors You there, Nelson? We can't hear you if you are. Sure. Roll me an investigation check, please. You hear glass break. And you see that you accidentally... Or you think you accidentally broke the window. But you didn't. I actually would actually notice the sound because he's looking around, and he would he, he might I don't know if that's Kevin. He might suspect that you're the one that broke it if you're coming from that direction, but it was not. It was actually on the other side of the window that broke. All right. Well. What I'm saying, Nelson, is the glass actually broke that you're listening through. Like, the window, that window broke. Um, 
Matt, not Matt, um, sorry, Ben, what is your passive perception? Ben. Uh, you're fine. Okay, you would not see this then. Okay, cool. We're good. <clears throat> um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Ba Oh, I see why. Oh, my mouse. Dude, don't tell my mouse just died. My mouse just died. Damn it. Yeah, when you're trying to do something, your mouse just disappears. And you're like, where'd it go? And you realize, oh, it's dead. Pika, Pikachu! <laughs> Copyright free one. All right, be prepared to turn him down if you need to. I'm playing some suspenseful music for us. All right, so Matt, my question for you is how does your character, like, where is he before? He meets them. Did you have an idea, or would you like me to to bring him in? Okay. So you are actually nearby. You were uh, the thing we talked about, and you grew up here. Yeah, I'm not in this area, but this timeline. And you know what's going on in the world. You know about the cryptids and everything and the war against the humans and the cryptids. And you would be, uh, you could choose how far away, but you're not immediately next to them. But you see them. You're probably across the street from where the glass broke, but down the street a little bit. And you would you would see what was going on. Who deafened him? What did? Uh, you can roll perception to see. Matt, roll, uh, you can either allow him to see you, or you can roll stealth. You see him. Okay. Rightfully so. Something is off with him, Axi. So, let's see here. Matt, uh, you have a picture of him, do you not? Let's see. 
So go to Character Hub and look at Lord Luck. That is who you see, Kevin. You feel something unnatural. Something that does not belong. Go ahead. It's hard to just hard to explain. Do you like? Do you consider like mental, psychological, physical, or overall? He. His presence itself is a threat, but he is not threatening you. No, not currently. He is not trying to attack you. No. The shadow's gone. You hear more noise from where it was before, from the breaking glass area. Not glass. It's more like crunch, crunch, like something stepping on the glass. Broke. Yes. Yes. What about you, Matt? Do you keep walking? You can you can say what you're saying, Kevin. Oh yeah, right. Okay, so. That's uh, Ben and Nelson, currently. Um, you look around. You look around, um, Kevin, and you see that uh, Hans is on the floor. On the floor. No, beside you. He is on the ground. I'm beside you. That would be up to, you have to talk to Ben about that. Ben? Is he just passed out or what? Or is he just, co is he coherent? Can you give us more description? Picking up Hans. This one might be low. Be careful. What? Oh, I think five. Uh, this Viper is having issues. Sad. Here, that's the music. All right. So, 
You pick up Hans, you said, Nelson. Your character... Your character is pretty worthy. He, uh, think of it like Milner. You're able to lift Hans, but you're still struggling. Kind of like uh, Captain did a little bit. <laughs> At that moment, his bag spews out peanuts all over the ground. Someone needs to close it. Matt? Would you like to assist them? Good news and bad news. You did not break any buildings. The bad news, my friends, is no. That you currently have four cryptids running at you full speed. And I actually looks where they're coming because he can hear them. And he sees Elena in that broken window. No, they're, co they're coming nearby. They're running past her to you guys. They were going to go get her, but they heard Hans shatter the ground. Yes, and she is not safe. She is in immediate danger. <clears throat> Congratulations! You literally flattened one of the werewolves into a pancake. He's still alive! And he's literally like, like, uh, think Looney Tunes back in the day. He is f like a saucer. And at that moment, Calvin Krushnick walks over, takes off his glove, puts his hand on the werewolf puddle thing, and all of a sudden it shatters and disappears. And puts his glove back on. Thank you, Targus. Congratulations, you did it again. Same thing happens. Calvin walks over. Takes his glove off, touches it, it shatters and disappears. Puts his glove back on, he nods his head, and waits for to see what you do again. Um, Nelson, you being a, uh, a lion would un would know that the la the very the fourth one is different than the rest. He, uh, you would see him as the alpha of the pack. All right. Motherfucker. Think of that one.
Speaking of that, Nelson hits a rock. Hans goes flying into the air, spinning. And he's coming down with his ass down. And now he must do the, the Slim Shady bit as Hans. <laughs> You're the real Hans. Will the real Hans please stand up? Please stand up. <laughs> and all of a sudden, he falls down. <laughs> On top of the Alpha. And the Alpha goes through the ground. Like whack-a-mole. Hans. Oh, no, Hans. At the moment you hold up a thumb, you see one crawling on Hans's shoulder, inching its way towards his head. It's attached, by the way. Oh, no! <laughs> I, I hope you hit high. Yeah, you hit it. <laughs> It goes, it goes flying so far that it pins the other werewolf against the wall through the scruff of its neck. You must roll strength check to get out of the hole. <laughs> yes! <laughs> no, you're stuck. Yes. You pull, you pull, and you get a hernia. <laughs> what? What'd you say, Matt? Okay. Would you? Oh, it's worse than that. It's worse than that. Oh, that's fun. No. So, let's see here. Let's roll to see what happens. Da -da 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 -da. I figured. All right, Hans, higher or low? I'll give you one chance, higher or low?
Unfortunately, it is low. Isn't it? Jess, low. All right, hang on. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Hans, just for reference, two ones and two twos. It's a one, one, two, two, five, and a seven. Well, see, that's the problem. He's no longer loaded full of peanuts. Oh. <laughs> but no. Um, at the very last second. <sighs> Does it work? Yes, it works. I got a 20. At the very last second. The gentleman labeled Alan and none NPCs appears out of nowhere. Like that, like out of smoke. He appears and grabs the piece before it gets impaled in Hans's ass. <laughs> I know. It broke and was slinging. Like it ricocheted. Right before it pierces Hans's ass, Alan comes out of nowhere and grabs it. And puts a hand on Han's shoulder. You owe me one. As he removes it gently and walks away. <laughs> what, Matt? Um, Matt, I need you to roll me a perception check. Actually, I'm sorry. D uh, I said perception. I meant crap. What was it called? It, uh, insight. Why? Okay, never mind. Don't worry about it. You didn't notice anything. Don't worry about it. Um, Exide, back to you and Elena. Elena is dazed. She looks like she had the life sucked out of her. No. You see a trail. <clears throat> you see a trail of blood. Oh, yeah, the back door is wide open. Yep. Yep. The only way in is through the glass that broke, by the way.
at that moment... Go ahead, Matt. At that moment, <clears throat> you hear a... Zoinks! Why is this door open? Yes. <laughs> you come face to face. <laughs> Go ahead, Matt. You come smack dab like you smack right in dab into Skippy Doo's face, Kevin. You come smack dab right into Skippy Doo's face. <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> I, I think that's my favorite reaction ever. At that moment, Hans realizes Scooby's face is balls deep inside his peanut bag. <laughs> oh. <laughs> now, I, 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 at, the, at the moment you try to touch Scooby, Shaggy's demeanor changes and you feel murderous intent. Like you're going to die if you don't let go of the dog. Scooby, bad, but put my fucking dog down. <clears throat> At that moment, Calvin catches up. Yo, Shag, what's up? Two legs. 
He just looks at Sh Scooby. Just looks. Sc Scooby just looks at Shaggy. You bitch. Calvin, like, put, put your hand, like, his hand up to stop you from using him. Like, from unsheathing him entirely. I know these guys. It's okay. He scratches his head. Um, Jess, do you notice? No, you don't remember that. You the question you asked me. You have a vampire parrot on your shoulder. Do I feel threatened by it? No. You somehow feel at home with it. And you will feel like it's the one protecting you. Oh. <coughs> so you wouldn't want to be separated from it. Matt, I need you to roll me another a uh, uh, insight check. I know. Oh, you you feel like that bird is giving you the worst death glare ever. Like it wants to murder you. Wait, wait, I missed that. What did you say, Ben? <laughs> oh, Ben! Ben, you're a god, so I need you to roll me Arcana. No, there's something different going on here. Matt knows. No, I think it's called me an idiot. Yeah, we're kind of... It's me. Oh, no. So, Hans. You see a flash of an image of somebody else instead of him, and you, like, rub your eyes, and, like, he's back to normal, but it does it, like, twice. By the way, Ben. Oh, wait. Okay. <clears throat> so, Hans doesn't notice anything. Good. Um. Oh, yeah. Luckily, he's not, um... <clears throat> Anybody else you know? <clears throat> Moving on. Um, at that moment, uh, he's right in, like beside him still. Beside Kevin, or kind of like in front of, but decided to, to the side a little bit. Like you can see him and reach him if you wanted to. Let's see what we got. 
um, extreme weather work, a tornado warning until 7.45. Take shelter in basement immediately. Well, we're fucked because we don't have that. We have to leave tornado in town until 7.45. So in about 20 minutes, or less, we have nowhere to go in this apartment. We're kind of bummed. The problem is our floors are so rickety. I get what you're saying, though, Kevin. We'll be fine. I've been in multiple tornadoes. Yeah, I... Do we want to pause for a second? Mm-mm. No, there's no, there's no reason. There's nothing we can do, Jess. It's five minutes from now. Five minutes is what it's saying. Yeah, I've been, like, when I was younger, a tornado literally hit the house beside me, jumped, and hit the, uh, the house on the other side, and it continued down, destroying all the houses. Hold on. Oh, the rain, damn. Come look at this, Jess. Yeah. Seen it. They, they saw the, the, the funnel or whatever. Confirmed. <clears throat> it, um, from what I've seen, it doesn't, but it did say that it should be over in four minutes. I mean, this was really short for a warning, so it must be like it just popped up. Chase it, Kevin. <laughs> I can physically see her fighting the urge to go outside right now. Not sideways, but diagonally. It's going diagonally. Yeah, that's a, that'd be a problem. I hear a train. <laughs> we literally have a train going by right now. <laughs> the train just gets thrown in the opposite direction. Time is our time, okay? Well, it's 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 fine. You'll come through more. You, it, it grips your mortality soon enough, Matt. No, I'm just joking, guys. Um. All right, so let's keep going. Uh, Elena is going to wait. 
I am going to, going to what? Uh, carefully walk up bes beside Ayak. Ayak, I'm sorry, the echo is getting me. Um, and hold out my hand to, Sco to Scooby. Like, carefully. He looks at it. Looks at Shaggy. Looks at your hand. And Shaggy just taps him on the head. And he like slowly comes over and puts his head underneath your hand. Elena sits down and hugs Scooby. Scooby crouches and now is now on a ball in your lap. And scratching his head and having a moment. Okay, here we go. What? I'm scratching his head and mm. having a moment. Ah. I'd say you'd be keenly aware of this because you're protecting her. <coughs> yeah! Scooby says. Uh, I don't know, it's Shaggy. Uh, Shaggy goes, You're in Oxford. It's a college town full of liberals. Uh, oh, right, right. Mr. Calvin. Uh, I got nothing. It's a, uh, Calvin goes, it's a city. We're in a city and a large community known as a state. Like, he, he gives you a whole spiel of what a city, states, and countries are. Do you know what a state was? Yeah, so I'm, exp like, he explains it to him. Like, he gives him a rundown. Like, he tries to explain it in his terms. Yeah, it's like a village. A, bit, a little bit bigger than a village. And college, think about the town is, is centered around learning. And sex. Lots and lots of sex, apparently. <laughs> and at that moment, you guys hear... Uh, what noise was it? What would it be? It's my favorite line from uh, from Call of Duty Zombies. Say him! What? Mom. Oh. Um, you hear zombies calling a name. And from the sounds of their footsteps, whoever has good hearing can tell that there is a horde coming your way. Female would like to do a perception check. They can see what name they're chanting. Go ahead, Matt. Kevin hears it first, and you all hear it in um, descending order. You hear them say Elena. Oh, they're coming from north. So to give you give you direction, to give you direction, Kevin, the roads run north to south. They're coming towards the back of the building. They're outside on the back door area. Close to you guys. It's like they're coming after Elena. Alright, sure. You need to go to the alley from the opposite side of the street. Yes. Back out the window. Yes. The alley that Nelson found originally, where Hans was asleep, was, was on the ground. I 
I know a place. Uh, uh, Shaggy tells you he knows a place where you can hide out away from the horde, and they won't find you. Here he goes, and you see Scooby just get, uh, slowly get off of her lap, and then he's faster than anybody. He bolts the direction you need to go, and he's like, "Follow the dog." That's the corner. Yeah. <laughs> Brains. Let's find out. Uh, about 60 feet. I'm sorry. 120 feet is what I meant to say. Um, I ask, I ask, I, are you going with them? You, you see people coming from the opposite side of the zombies to your group. Two people. Two. And you're from the side of the zombies. The two people coming from the south. <laughs> oh, you want to know who they look like? Hold on. Hold on. Place hold. You'll see. I forgot about that. I know. I could because it one time, one time.
No comment. Batman! Are you Batman? Not yet. I am make I'm getting them right now. I should let you know they're not teenagers anymore. Almost done. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention, guys. These two were the ones that show up. And general. He's an adult now. He looks around. Oh! Hey, Fred! Where's Velma? <laughs> Shut up. Um, so you guys keep running, and uh, they say to go into the left. There's a building with the stairs going up directly um, in the alleyway. You guys go up the stairs, uh, I mean, you turn left, go up some more stairs, and then, you know the, the the stairs that go, like, it cuts through the building halfway, and then there's a, like a, a broom on one side of it? It's like a stairwell without, without like, an outside wall, essentially. Well, there's one there, and there's a door. Uh, let's see. Who would be there first? Targus? He. So, Scooby's there. He's just sitting at the door, waiting patiently, like he's supposed to be here. And. He's looking at you, like, I can't open it. <laughs> you can't! You try to, and it doesn't open. And you're a... Burr! Name, business, social security number. Why the fuck do you have my dog? The door looks like it's made out of titanium. <laughs>
You're right. <laughs> um, so if the rest of the group starts piling up, and you just see Calvin push past everyone and goes to the door, and she goes, Oh, honey! And the door opens. Now, this is what you see, by the way. She's at a computer desk. And you see that it's hooked up to the entire CCTV grid. She think she doesn't freak out because she's seen you the entire time. After seeing cryptids, why would they? Actually, not in this universe. So you remember the, so you know how there's the movie universe and then there's there's the TV series universe and the ones in the movies are always real. We're in that kind of universe. So basically, when when they were kids, they would go do investigations and stuff, and they'd be like like uh, pup names could be do. But as they grew up and actually did Mister Inc., it's all been real. Yeah, they say, she said, but thank you for, for saying that because I was going to say something. She says, well, come on in. Don't leave the door open. Where are you, raising a barn? Close it before the zombies get in. What, Matt? And you just see the parrot get off Elena's head, her shoulder, and fly over and kick the door trying to shut it in Luck's face. The, the parrot gets off Elena's shoulder, flies over, and kicks the door, and tries to shut it in Luck's face. And the bird just floats away, like, behind the door so they can't see nothing and comes back to around and, like, walks up and comes up on the lady's shoulder. And she says, holster your weapons while you're in the building, please. Velma would turn and say, please holster your weapons while you're in the building. I don't want you shooting something to explode us all. And she waves her hand and you see very volatile the chemicals beside her. So, you don't even need to know that you do that, but then you look up and you see there is a smorgasbord. Like, like a, the fanciest buffet you've ever seen of food on the corner of the room. That Shaggy and Scooby have already gone over to start eating. And they're like, you can't have any unless you ask, the Scooby says. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and you, you look beside you, because you feel a tap on your shoulder, and Scooby has handed you a sandwich. And it is with the Dagwood that reaches the ceiling. She sneezes. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, and she starts sneezing again. I, I'm not normally allergic to cats. Achoo! <laughs> and she blows her nose. Oh. Can, can, can I... Achoo! I ask you to back up a foot or two, please. Achoo! Oof. Hold on. 
on a second, and like, she puts a mat, like something over her mouth, and she takes uh, like a, like a pair of tweezers and motions for her to take a piece of your fur, like she's like a clipping. What actually, Kevin? Thank you for reminding me. So when you got, when Alex I came in. So when Alex I came in, you know, you've guys seen uh, Resident Evil stuff. So think about when they lock down the facility entirely with like the really good tech that happens to the door. Like you hear locks go into place. You see bars go side, crisscross like lattice for the, the walls and the ceiling. And then like a, a shutter that goes spiraling, kind of like Stargate, and closes behind it. And then you... And then, I don't know who's susceptible to this, she, push, she, she pushes a button, and the entire building is now a Faraday cage. Basically, no signal that's not land, like, not wired, can come in or out. Thank you. Now, for gods, for gods, they are cut off from the outside world entirely. This is the first time in their life they've ever felt this way. Like you have no connection to the divine. So Hans. You, you no longer feel your god powers for a second. This would feel like a... It would feel like a weight has been lifted from you guys. It's not bad. It's not... It's basically like there's no burden on you anymore. From the world. You, you try to tap her, and then the bird instead grabs your cane and, like, shakes it violently. Do I know you? I actually, you would notice this. One second. It snaps your cane. Oh, the bird. Sorry, one second. And then only you hear this. I am not your friend. Oh, he, he that voice came out wrong, by the way. It would have sounded like a young gentleman. <laughs> I, I, don't, I guess if my voice just falls to this when it's dealing with Matt. <laughs> but, uh, it, you know, it sounds like, I am not your friend. You have you've never met this person before in your life, or bird. No, it is not. And then you hear touch her and you die. No looks at the cane. What am I, a wizard, Harry?
Do any of you have good memory? Like, cat your characters, I mean. Here, I, I tell you what. Um, I need everybody that has met her... Okay, roll history, Kevin. That will work. I need everybody, to ro everybody that wants to roll a history check real quick for Elena. Matt, you don't count. Oof. Don't worry about you, Matt. <laughs> you're, like you said, you're excluded. Hans forgot who she was. <laughs> Think you're not memorable. All right, so nobody notices anything or knows anything because for what I was talking, what I was thinking about. Um, let's see here. The, the chemicals, real quick, before I was not going to address that. Um, you would notice while you were all doing that stuff, Velma was slowly carting them away, like putting them on a cart and carting them away into a secure closet that is um, medical grade. Because she could tell you were uh, uncomfortable around the, the chemicals, Kevin. I don't know that. She notices fire come from, like, like, embers come off of you every now and then. And she, like... Um, now, Matt. You hear a different voice. You hear a Matt, he says, hello. I will fix your game if you listen to me. And your cane, uh, that was responding, so your cane is fixed. A sign of good faith. I'm not Aster. I'm... How to put this? I'm like you. Got a drift in the world. I don't know what I am. You're making this really hard for <laughs> me. <laughs> Alright, so he's like, uh, he doesn't know what he is. He's not a god, but he doesn't know what he is. Yeah, he's, uh, he just wants to have a chat with you. He'll make it worth your while. What do you want? No! I don't want to. No. I refuse. What do you want? He says. Matt's talking to himself. <laughs> um. Okay, he says... What do you need, and what do you want? He makes a deal with you. Do me a favor, and I'll give you your powers. 
And if you do this favor, basically he's saying he'll give you he'll give you the powers to help you complete his favor. And that once you do like start doing the favor, he will give you your guns. I'll text it to you. He gives you, he gives you one command. He gives you one command. I can actually, I'll go, I'll go into detail later with you of how to do that. Name your price. Nothing much. I just need you to whisper in his ear every now and then. Do you want to be a god again? I can make sure that never happens. Nelson, stay out of this. <laughs> he says, I can help. Kevin, Kevin, you can use your character without a character card as long as he's just, he's just uh, accenting the group right now. And we'll say he walked in from the other room. Oh, I can do that. One second. Oh, you can do you can do that right now. That's fine. You can do it right now. Three is fine. I'll send it to you directly, Kevin. As long as you don't use them for combat at the moment.
Yes. You think you do. You think you do. Kevin, I sent you a message. Uh, well, I have a problem. I need to figure out how to fix it because somebody was going to play ball. You see? Help me! I don't know what to offer! I don't know your character! So how many? He literally asked you what what you would what you need to do it, Matt. He says, "I know." They always do. Uh, and he'll tell you what I text you. Um, so he says that he can facilitate, but it would not be immediate. But he will guide you to where you need to go to get you back. And he tells you that the one who has who, who has your guns and confirms it's who you thought it was. Speaking of which, Nelson, I need you to use Bokti and Roll Arcana. Why are you doing that? Um, Matt, you. Oh, he knows exactly who said his name. Almost like a sugar in. Um,. Let's see, you asked for Godhood, he says, in time, once you've achieved your goal. And you then see... pick a body part. Matt. Matt. Nelson did. No, you're not going to come back now if you choose I. You can choose whatever body part you want, including the eye if you so desire. It could be your pinky for all I care. It could be your scrotum. I don't give a shit. Choose a body part. You see, or uh, not see, you wouldn't see because you're like the outfit you're on, but you would feel that this like tinge and when you look at it it would be like a shadow a tattoo and it's like shadows had grabbed your arm and swirled to come like a snake crawling down it and it's just a serial looking black tattoo the deal has been struck struck whatever you get the point. <clears throat> now, um, Ben, being a god and all, roll a Kana. <laughs> Elena, due to this, your necklace starts rising up off your chest.
Something strange in the neighborhood. <laughs> Who are you gonna call? Scooby Doo! Hans? You feel your mom calling your name and like, like you're in trouble. Hans' mom. He, he feels like his mom's calling him when she's in trouble. <laughs> She's telling you you're eating too many peanuts. Oh no. And she says, I'm not dead. Your father locked me in a prison. I'm trapped inside China. I'm trapped inside a prison in the earth under China. <laughs> no more like under the capital, Beijing. Your father ran up with some harlot! He fucked Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> oh no, Matt. <laughs> you know we're banned in China now, right? see Alan come up to you. I don't know where. And he leans in. I know what you just did. <laughs> oh, but I will. And all he whispers is the game is a foot mouse. And disappears. Yeah, as you talk to the ear. <laughs> All right, so. And uh, Calvin's over there with, with uh, Velma trying to figure out a game plan. And, and he goes, he goes, her necklace is, gl is glowing and floating. He's talking to the to the sky. They're picking their faces out. He's having an existential crisis with his mother. What the fuck's going on here? And he and he looks like Targus and just like tries to hold in a laughter. Poof ball. Like you try to comb your hair down as soon as you get the last bit of strand. Poof! Calvin's like, hold on. He snaps his hands. Prestidigitation, your hair flat. Pretty good. Oh, by the way. In the back of your hair, you can't see it, but he put bow ties in your mane. Pretty kitty. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just see Beauty and the Beast where they go the first round and he ends up with like bows in his mane. Trying to dress and all of a sudden, 
and Shaggy turns around and sees it. It starts bawling, laughing, spills his food almost, but then Scooby slides under with his mouth open and just eats it all. Oh no. sees on a monitor that they, nobody else sees at the moment because they're dealing with all the other shenanigans. You see this monstrosity of a beast. You remember the ca the campaign we did with Charlie? The monster in the in the, her capital city of all the bodies mutated together as abomination the size of like three buildings? Yeah, it's now outside approaching the building. He sees it next. I mean, you couldn't, you had trouble seeing until uh, Tarkus's fur was uh, flattened. <laughs> use, use, okay, okay. Godzilla sized abomination of conglomerated zombie bodies into one being. And then, um, you guys got, uh, Velma's attention. She looks at the monitor. <sighs> not again! And she hits the, hits the, the console. And you see a big red button that says, do not press. Especially you, Scooby. No, she hits it herself. And then you just hear a, eh, 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 eh. And a door comes open from the wall. And you just feel, feel like a vacuum. As there are new, as there, there's a pneumatic tube kind of thing going on in a, in a hole. And she says, everybody ass is in now. She goes, you last. Well, no, hold on. She walks over. It's perfect time. You, elephant. I mean, ganache. I mean, what do they call you? Hans, she shakes her hands. And as she's shaking her hand, she puts a vial in her hand. Drink this. Coconut. It, it, it. <laughs> Congratulations, he is now human form. Like, actual human. They're ethereal. It, well, it's only temporary, she, she says. It's only temporary. Okay, you, you know the, 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 the guy from Mortal Kombat. You're him, but not as big. You're like like normal human size, but you have the arms. Is is he related to Shaggy now? I mean, he looks similar to Shaggy. Oh, 
Not in this universe. Now, now he uses edibles, but he microdoses psilocybin. Hold on. How many arms do you have? Four or six? Four or six arms. Oh, you can go now. I know. Oh no. I uh I I, I try to generate a photo. I try to generate a photo and it's horror inducing. It's, it's, it's developing. Hold on. I'm using Mid Journey, by the way. Yeah, th these are the four uh, it developed for me for the prompt bin. Okay, Matt. I'll send it to you. I put human with four arms there. That's what happened. <laughs> right? Like, oh. oh. I mean, like, I can use those for monsters, man. You know what? Uh, you can't look unless you come in here. I'll send them to you directly. Yes. There you go. She's in the room. Somebody give me a skinny actor. Is that okay? Okay, okay, here, here. Give me an actor that gives the essence of Hans. Kevin Farrell? John Candy, you said? John Candy would be good. Chris Farley would be great. How do you spell it? Farley, I mean. You're gonna hate this. You're gonna hate this. You're gonna hate this. I I I already know you're gonna hate this photo. <laughs> Hold on, it's it's developing. You know what, Ben? Uh, let's see, not Ben. Uh, you know what? I I could I could. <laughs> I'll wait. It's waiting to start. Oh, fuck. Uh, 
We're, we're age restricted. We're not monetizing. It's fine. You're not virgin. Hey, I'm sorry. <laughs> We said the name. Uh, don't look in D and D updates if you don't want to see people with multiple arms, Kevin. Oh my god! Don't do it, Kev. I will delete it after they see it. I just don't feel like sending it to everybody. If it did it right, that is. Oh crap, what the hell did it do? Take a look. It's in D&D updates. One of them, it just puts crabs in his hands. I think the top, I think the Chris Farley was better with the bottom right with the forearms. That one. You see it? Think about think, think of that guy as a skinnier version of Hans right now. Sending this to you directly, and I'm deleting them from there. Not near feel gone. You can now look in DD updates, anybody. The, the last one wasn't that bad that I had. Hi. So. What this does? Oh, yeah, I know, right? I might use it to make monsters from now on. Terrifying. Oh, no. Speaking of which, you know what? No. No. You know what? I saw Reba. R E B A. Why? Why? <laughs> it's not a bit bad. Yes, I, I, there, there's a point to this one. I'm not actually doing anything bad to her. What? All right, so go ahead, Matt. Oh, yeah. Okay, those aren't that good. All right. 
Moving on. So, uh, for your information, all I was doing is making the Reba McIntyre a zombie. That's all. So, I don't know yet. It's still um, imaging. Uh, so, you guys all go down the tube, I, I assume, correct? Alright, so, you guys go down... And you go down, and you go down. You ever been to an amusement park ride that's in the dark? Think of that. Like the twists, the turns, the turbulence. And you just keep going, and going, and going. Eventually, you come out to an underground facility. And... You guys get spit out at high velocity onto what's essentially a medical fancy fancy mattress, kind of like you would put down for people jumping off of buildings. Yeah. But it's a mat. It just. Which one of those is better? Uh, I want to be before haunt. Which of those four is better? Can you check an image generation for me? Where at? Image generation. <laughs> Alright, so everybody's there. And Velma gets up, walks over to a panel, slides it over, and puts a password that says Velma mode. Plus guests, because you guys saw a turret come down. I thought I'd at least get more than one chuckle. Either top left or top right. Wow, tough crowd. Got it. I didn't hear what you said. I said that uh, Velma... Walked over to a panel, slid it over, said, and said Velma mode. And then you saw a, a turret come down, and she says plus guess, and it goes away. A what? A turret. Oh. She, and she says plus guess, so the turret goes away. Gotcha. It's a parody to Incredibles. <laughs> forward. <Come> forward. <laughs> <laughs> the bar just comes down. <laughs> <laughs> and he thinks that uh, he sees uh, Matt's character above him fall coming down at lo from the, the angle. It looks like his. Uh, Jacket is a cape because it has a twin tail, like a long tail on it. All right, so everybody gets down there, and she says, "Come on, come on, it's not safe in here. Come on." And as Velma walks in, you guys see. This come down behind you. Because nobody, they, we didn't get to close the door. So, a zombie falls in. It misses. It misses. 
You know what? Let's see. Speaking of it being emotion. Oh no! Jessica. Look. I got a one. It got a one coming down the slide. Would anybody like to ta want, like to regale us? Hey, Kevin, would, would your bard like to regale us the story of how the Reba McIntyre zombie came down the slide so fast she splatted against the wall? So, <laughs> wait, hold on. I saw Boff Deer. Why is Boff Deer rolling? That's not the right one. Well. Hold on, I'm getting old logs. Let me reload. There we go. Let's find out how hard. Anybody over 16 did not get splatted. Calvin starts uh, speaking. Calvin speaks some words in a different language, waves his hand, and everybody is now prestigitized uh, as well. What, that? Uh huh. He just cleaned you. Valma's like, oh, sorry, somebody forgot to close the hatch. Boof! And even like a submarine, like the submarine sounds where they close the hatch on top as they go down. That's the kind of sound you hear grating up top. Nelson, your character would hate the sound and want to run inside as fast as possible. No. <laughs> Alright. You guys read, uh, go inside and you just see like this megalith of a like, like I think it's the best command center you've ever seen in media. Ever. I like the Batcave but Mr. Eat style. Scooby go looks around smelling. Where's all the food, Raggy? Like, 
Zoink, Scooby. I don't know. Well, Velma, where's all the food? We haven't been down here yet. We haven't stocked any provisions. And then Scooby goes, Wait! How do we get out of here? <laughs> so, like, um, you, uh, I actually in particular hear this. He hears noises going on, right? Like, in the other room. Like, there's multiple rooms to this place. And he hears people. And he would see these people scattered throughout the facility in random in random areas. Think of it like an underground government bunker. Like, there's different corridors and everything, and they have maps of the world. They have uh, various monitors as they've tapped into the world's CCTV cameras. And installed some of their own. And she was joking about the food. And I, I, he obviously would tell. Because he would say this is not just your run-of-the-mill operation. This would be like world class. Like, not world class. This is like the, the, the highest tech facility ever. And then somebody sees him, and they bow. I know this is a strange land you come from, travel far traveler. We apologize for the inconvenience. May we provide you with refreshments? Well, no, you guys aren't there. You guys aren't there. It's only Kevin. Oh, hold on, it's only Kevin. He, he Kevin, uh, character would would see this, uh, see him. I'm sorry. Do you want to do want us the bard to do it instead? I just figured I actually would. Okay. <laughs> As it be. Surprisingly to you, they know what you're speaking of. And I don't know what they would say, but they would say something to allow you, or to make, let, let, let you know that they understand. Hold on a second. Yeah, I can't find it. I'll put up my I'll top the top, top search. All right. Well, you just assume that they did that and encounter to him. And they show you like they wave to a broom. Go ahead. And then you just see a gentleman walk past behind him. And he has similar guns to you and a similar demeanor. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, he was too focused on his task that he could not hear you. And you would realize that he didn't hear you. And then, like, you can follow him if you want. However, that would mean ignoring the person in front of you, just so you know. The guy who countersigned you and said that he is offering refreshments and he apologizes for your sudden displacement. 
essentially. Go ahead. Yeah. Can you roll me a perception check? And he says, sure, right away. And he turns around and and walks away. Yes. You make it an advantage. Oh, 19's fine. It's close enough. It's good enough. So you would hear. Go ahead. Okay. So you know this is the same guy. You would hear him in the other room, down the corridor, say, I am with my eye, I do not shoot with my hand. He who shoots with his hand has forgotten the face of his father. I shoot with my mind. I do not kill with my gun. He who kills with his gun has forgotten the face of his father. And you both say it at the same time. <sighs> it is the purest water you have ever touched your lips. So you guys are still with Velma in the beginning area, like the like the airlock essentially, or the waiting area. They I kind of actually as it wandered in. Anybody else would hear him though. Does anybody else want to respond to uh, Lord Luck, who has not introduced himself yet? Who's shaking it? What happened? Wait, I'm sorry. I was typing. Say it again. What happened? Who said what president?
interested in these? Well, it's not cursed, first of all. It's just a symbol of a pact. Yeah. So, what precedent did he set, Kevin? Oh, yeah, he did. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's not metagaming. You're, he, you're, he, he's right. He did set the precedent. Like, she'd be turned off. S show him the picture of Lena, by the way. Hans, two Arcana Chucks checks now. I'm posting, I'm posting Elena right now for you guys. You touched his his shadow hand, right? Yeah. So two Arcana checks, please. Yes. Basically, it was advantage, Ben. Okay, 18 has it. So now that the image you saw before, you do not see Lord Luck anymore. Matt, what does he see? You can describe it. Those up to no good. It was the word. Kevin, the, the saying I sent you, I need you to remember that for later. Direct quote from him. From the, the author, I mean.
Kevin, that essentially is a parting gift from them to you. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, with the, you can't be on on um, crap. What, what's the word when you release an arrow? Knock, or yeah, yeah. Essentially, from all of these context clues, your character would surmise that they are this world's version of you. <laughs> and you, I don't know, he probably would, would take context clues that this world has gone down the worst possible path and that they are no longer what they were before because. All the arrows have been shot already. Right. I'm trying to make not make it the same but different, you know. So, uh, go ahead, Kevin. See that guy. Do you do anything? Yes. And right at this point, you can freely choose which one you want to be. For Hans! Yeah. You can control both in this one. <laughs> and Hans just realizes this. Like, both Hans just realize this. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. You know what? That makes sense because he has to come to grips with it. <laughs>
I got it. I got it. Ben. Obviously, he's not wearing the gimp suit, but this character looks like your gimp character. No, you don't. You don't. You don't. I'm just saying. It's, 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 it's that kind of situation. Like, he has good Hans and bad Hans, and then he looks like the human dude. <laughs> Kill them, Smeagol! No, I won't! I don't want to kill the habits! Go! Kill them! Oh! Oh! Uh, moving away. Nelson, would it be safe to assume that he would, uh, targets would look around? You find a room! That looks like a supply closet. Like, not a closet, like a supply room, like like the, the the supply RX, the depot. You find a very interesting looking box, and you want to see what's inside. What's in the box? Some guy walks by, the, 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 the quartermaster. Oh, it's okay, we're trying to get rid of it, you can have it. What's in the box? I don't know, the boss lady said just to get rid of it, you can have it. I don't give a shit. He waits at the door. I'm kind of curious. You want to open it? The the quartermaster walks over and hands you a a, um, a, a, a crap. What do you call that? The the tire iron. He says or crowbar. Yeah. He he says open it. What's in the box? No. Actually? Hmm. One second, Matt. No, you would not. Because you were not part of the... Uh, yeah, no, you wouldn't. Okay, text me what you think it is, Matt and Nelson. I'm curious if you're right. All I know is I've been trying to do this for a while and keep forgetting about it. No, you're incorrect. Nelson. No, you actually both said the exact same thing and you're both wrong. I can tell you... 100% Jess could see my hand over my heart. It is not that. His hand's on a stick. No, it's not. Shut up. <laughs> Nelson, congratulations. You're now played with the very first campaign that you ever played with me. He's back! <laughs> Master! his side and will give him anything he asks for but the caveat is he doesn't know how he's getting it
<laughs> I don't know why I kind of did like the house elf from like Dobby. <laughs> it's basically like an evil Dobby. You guys had fun. Nelson, remind me to start with you next time. I mean, <laughs> I didn't think I did have that bad a job of Scooby. You did a better job, but. Then why are you doing dogs for, bro? Never mind, don't worry about it. Um, why are you doing dogs? Yeah, that. Because of what Kevin said. Oh, no! <laughs> Um, ben, remind me to remind me to talk to you about Scooby later. Well, not today, but sometime this week. Night, everybody. Bye. Peace. Peace, everybody. Said Scooby. Race. I guess he would say. <laughs> <laughs>